How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boil Eye Hobby Time. This monster right here is one of the custom miniatures from my upcoming tabletop RPG. Today I'm going to be making a diorama out of it, encountering some hunters. And to stay notified about the game, go sign up for the Kickstarter pre-launch, which is in the description. After making a perch for the monster, I gently drilled some holes in its feet using my pin vise with corresponding holes in the log, which I filled with some styrene rods of the same size for a nice snug fit. After trimming the rods to the correct length, I tested that they lined up with the feet holes, and they did, so I moved on to the terrain. When I started this diorama, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to lay it out, but ultimately I decided on a riverbank with a log that had fallen into it. I built up a foundation for the terrain with one layer of foam which I glued fully to my base, I trimmed off camera on my hot wire table, I then glued on the layers that will become the riverbank. The next steps were to carve a spot for the log to rest naturally, and then cut up the log where it had broken as it fell into the water. After sawing the log in two, I chipped up the end so it would look like an old rotten log that would snap if it had fallen over. I then glued on some branches and I carved a slope into the riverbed to give more depth further from the bank. I added one additional vertical log and then I broke out my little dremel and added some organic texture to the foam. While none of this texture will be visible in the end, it will help establish the form of the land that the terrain paste will sit on top of. I was also sure to wear a respirator the whole time I was doing this to prevent any unwanted foam dust from getting in my lungs. And I guess the way I said that would imply that there was wanted foam dust getting in my lungs, but there wasn't. The next step was to use a heat gun to even out the terrain and give it more of a rounded surface. I then glued the fallen tree into its position and it was time to add some sculpt mold sculpt mold doesn't always create a watertight seal, and resin often finds its way through it, but one thing that helps provide a little more of a seal is to add some Mod Podge. I used Gloss Mod Podge in this case because it's a little bit more rubbery. After adding my water, I mixed the paste by hand and applied it to the base, making sure to spread it out thoroughly but carefully so as not to cover up the branches entirely. Once the ground was covered, but still wet, I threw on some little plants. These are plastic plants that I found in the floral section. I trimmed off little bits and planted them in the sculpt mold and I also added a few molded resin rocks and I left the base for 24 hours to dry. And while I was waiting, I made some hunters. I'm really excited about the custom minis that will come with my game, but those are still in the works, so for this diorama I'm using some wargaming scale military miniatures kitbashed into little cowboys. The main customizations that I made to the characters were making their weapons a little bit more cowboy-like, removing some extra pockets, and of course adding some cowboy hats. And once all of the customizations had been made, these guys were ready to go hunting. The vehicle from which they will be foolishly hunting is this little boat, which I customized with some balsa wood. Of course, because this is the Wild Imaginary West, there must be a forestall on the boat as well. That's the name of the little device the antennas that you see all over the place in my wild western world. I'll give a little more explanation for those in a minute. After making some little cables out of guitar string and throwing on some pogo pin antennas, which were a gift from one of my patrons, the kit bashing was done and everything was ready to be painted. I glued everyone to their painting bases, then threw them on some painting handles which makes them easier to handle, and then I began priming. While I paint these minis and establish a little more lore, I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons. Like I mentioned a minute ago, the piece of tech on the back of the boat is something that you'll see a lot in the Wild Imaginary West. It's called a forestall, uh, which is usually a verb, but in this universe it's also a noun. It's the name of the device. Forestalls were developed to give inexperienced settlers the ability to roam the Wild West more easily without the fear of being attacked by the wildlife. The tech will be explained in more detail in the rulebook of the game, but forestalls work kind of like radios in a way, and have different settings. If you're traveling in an area where the wildlife is well known and predictable, a forestall works pretty well. You can input the region code, and it will run through targeted frequencies of those animals and should keep them from approaching. Things get dicey, however, when you start to cross from one region into another, where ranges of animals is a little bit blurry, or where migratory animals exist. It's possible that the signals that deter those animals are unknown or not in the settings of your specific forestall, popping your bubble of protection. In the case of this diorama, these hunters were hunting for waterfowl on a river that should have been outside the range of the common western opossum. This particular creature wasn't in the system, which wouldn't have been a problem, 
Uh, but this old male opossum got ran out of his territory by a younger, stronger challenger, just about a week or so earlier, and had been angrily moving north looking for new territory. Usually a few shots from a rifle would give enough time for a quick redialing of a forestall, which should be enough to dissuade an opossum from attacking, but unfortunately for the hunters, the monster's bruised ego isn't about to let it run away from another fight. I just came up with that little scenario for the sake of storytelling for this video. But being dropped into a scenario like that and having to figure out how you would survive is one of the best things about RPGs. I think it will be an awesome format for people to be able to experience the world of the Wild Imaginary West in their own unique way. After the miniatures had all been painted, I painted up the base, which I did not overdo with the highlight color for once. I was asked recently how I was able to cut my minis from their bases without messing up their feet. I do it a few different ways, but most commonly, it's my god hand nippers. These nippers are expensive, but they sure get the job done. After freeing them from their painting bases, I glued my hunters with their perfectly preserved feet into their watercraft, and I got ready to pour the resin. Before pouring the resin, I glued some acrylic sheets around three sides of the diorama to create the dam. I glued them in place with silicone adhesive, which holds the sheets in place, but will be easy to remove later, and it also creates a watertight seal to prevent the resin from leaking. I then mixed up my two-part shallow pour epoxy resin and threw in some alcohol ink to tint the water a nice, dark, slow-moving river green-brown. Once the resin and ink had been mixed all together and was the color of water that you should not drink, I poured it into the river. Once the river was full, I popped the bubbles with a torch as they rose to the surface and I added my hunters in their little boat. I used my helping hands to hold the boat exactly where it needed to be while the resin cured. I spent a little more time popping the stubborn bubbles, and then 24 hours later I came back to some nice fully cured resin. Then the acrylic walls were ready to be peeled away. The resin required a little bit of cleanup, and I needed to scrape away all the silicone residue off of the walls, otherwise my wooden veneer wouldn't have stuck to it. I picked up this veneer from a local hardwood store not far from where I live, and I've found it to be far more convenient than cleaning up the sides using other methods, like styrene or lots of sanding. And it makes sense why I've seen other people doing it for years. After my corners were nice and clean, it was time to add some ripples to the surface of the water, which is a very satisfying process. The second to last thing to do was to paint the sides of the diorama with black 4.0. And I've been asked why I don't just pre-paint the veneer before putting it on, and I found that it warps pretty heavily if I paint it beforehand. The last thing to do was to put the opossum in position on the log. After that had been glued in place, I called it good. If you'd like a way to play out your own stories in a wild western universe full of monsters and cool sci-fi tech, and also want a way to support this channel, head over to Kickstarter and sign up for that pre-launch. It would really help a lot. Otherwise, that is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Huge shout out as always to my patrons. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week everyone. I'll see you next time.